Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to X's and O's, a podcast where I talk about queer relationships and sex. I'm still doing my intro two times right now because I already filmed the whole episode with Zoe and we did the intro again. So I don't really know how to navigate doing my beginning part and then doing the beginning part with a guest, but I'm going to figure it out. We will figure that out eventually. But as of right now, I'm just going to do the intro twice. But I'm your host, Shannon Beveridge. Thank you for joining me on this fine Valentine's Day or whenever you're listening. It's so crazy about the internet. Like you could be watching this December 12th, 2025, if it's still up, which it should be. I hope it is, but so weird about the internet, right? Anyway, it's kind of crazy. Like my whole YouTube channel will forever be a time capsule that I can go back and look at. And I do every once in a while, very rarely, but every once in a while I do look back on it and holy shit. I don't know if it's normal to have this much content of yourself, but it's, I have it. I have it and I can look at it if I want to. Scary. You can look at it if you want to. Even scarier. (laughs) I'm joined here today with Quinn. Quincy Fox. She's in the whole podcast episode. She's very tired. And that's her contribution for the day. Anyway, yes, it's Valentine's Day. Zoe and I talk about Valentine's Day in this episode. We give a lot of advice. We hear a lot of confessions and it's super fun. I'm so excited about having this phone uh, line set up and I can't wait to keep doing stuff like that. Um, A quick check in with my drive February. I have basically put myself in every scenario possible where drinking is involved, including like birthday parties, bars, Super Bowl parties, dinner parties, like anywhere, everywhere that I, I I did everything. I've done everything the last two and a half weeks, the way I would normally be living my life and just doing it soberly. And it's really nice to actually like not drink with intention versus just like Usually when I've done dry January and stuff, it's more of a cleanse and less like intentional, less like trying to figure out my physical anxiety and like just the my relationship with alcohol and how I sometimes will drink in like a stressful situation instead of just like to make a fun time more fun. Because I think that's the way we all should be drinking is to make a fun time more fun, not to make a stressful time less stressful. It's been nice to clock. I feel like in general, if you've been watching my podcast regularly, then you know that my therapist and I, my whole thing that I'm supposed to be doing to kind of work on myself is just to notice things, like notice the things that make me feel the way I feel. And I've actually really, really, really been so conscious of all of that. And yeah, it's been nice. It's been I've been feeling so much better. If you're somewhere and you've been like needing a push to go to therapy, let this be your push because I'm so pro therapy. It's been so nice. Anyway, back to Valentine's Day. If you are in love this Valentine's Day, congratulations. If you are heartbroken this Valentine's Day, I'm so sorry and I see you and I love you and the lows only make the highs higher and you will get through it. I promise. I've been through horrible breakups. You will be okay. I promise. If you are hanging out with friends this Valentine's Day, same. If you are alone this Valentine's Day, I hope you have some way to communicate with someone, even if it's like your parents or your best friend or your sibling. Communicate your love to someone because this day is not just about romantic love. It's about love in general. So I hope you reach out to someone. Tell them you love them. If you can't think of anyone you want to say that to, write it in the comments below and tell me. I would love to hear it. And I love you back. Okay. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I love my roommate Zoe. This was a last minute episode. I was actually going to take a break this week and I was supposed to tell you that in my last episode and then I didn't say it. So then I was like, you know what? I will just, I can push through and I'm going to make an episode. And so me and Zoe sat down today and filmed. And next week, my guest will be Vanessa. And I'm so excited for that. My bestie, Vanessa, from Canada. So if you want to leave any questions on this video for next video with Vanessa, I will look through the comments. Okay. Love you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Ooh. We're harmonizing. <laughs> We're not. Okay, hi guys. Well, wait, my hands. <laughs> hey guys. Hey guys. Okay. 
Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to X's and O's, a podcast where we talk about queer relationships and sex. It is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I have a very special guest with me here today. Her name is Zoe Hotel or Zolita. <laughs> Oh my god, my full name. The full name. Wait, <laughs> h- how do you th- you think I say your name weird? Say it again. Zolita. Yeah, you always do you want me to Zolita. Do you, you always say do? Zolita? No, I like how you say it. I think you should keep saying it that way. It's special. <laughs> I don't know why I can't change it. <laughs> anyway, my roommate Zoe is back for another episode, a special Valentine's Day episode. This episode is going to be like 90% y'all's call-in and text to my phone number, which I will remind you of now. In case you want to be a part of a future episode, you can either call or text 213-775-6258. And I think international numbers work because I keep getting questions about that, but I definitely have gotten international messages. So if you're not from America, I can get your message. It is Valentine's Day if you're listening to this. Happy Uh, Valentine's Day. Welcome to our casa, our single household. Our single household. But you know what? It's going to be a great Valentine's Day. Look at this decorations. I went all out. (laughs) I literally waited till the day before to film this just because Amazon didn't send me my decorations in time. But was it worth it? you know what? I think about Valentine's Day. What? So much pressure when you're in a relationship. So much pressure. It's kind of nice to like just spend it with your friends and like self love. Yeah. And we're gonna go to Dave and Buster's with all of our single friends, and that'll be so fun. Be Galentine's. Yeah, Galentine's. Valentine's Day is like such a build up. It, it feels like it's like the couple version of New Year's Eve. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's like so much. So true. So true. So much build up, and then you're like, and then also restaurants suck on Valentine's oh my Day. God, yeah. The only good way to do Tasting a Valentine's menus or, whatever, or like or prefix menus. Oh, they're so bad. Didn't that happen to you last year? Yes, and I hated that prefix menu. It was not good. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, Valentine's Day last year for me was also not the best holiday. No. It never is though. No. It just never is. It but is I, any holiday, I guess, with the tons of expectations and like. You think you should feel a certain way. Exactly. It's always going to be a little bit of a letdown, right? Which is kind of like every holiday, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Christmas Except for Halloween. Year? Yeah. Okay. Woo! You love Halloween. <laughs> because Halloween lasts a week long now. Yeah. You have many opportunities <laughs> for... Okay. Can we talk about this, though? Oh, we if have you're a, watching... A cute little guest. Oh, okay, Quinn. I'm so sorry. It kind of just manhandled oh. you. Okay. Quinn is here. If you're watching, you can see her. If you're not watching... Say hi, Quinn. <laughs> okay, she's here. As well as Valentine's Day, it is also one week post uh, Zoe's release date of her music video for Bloodstream. It came Woo! out last Thursday, and you're watching this on Wednesday potentially. We're gonna put in a snippet of the video. I creative directed it. Zoe did every, literally every <laughs> single other thing for this video. She is a star. Um, but I'm gonna put in a bit of the acting part here. Anything Yay. you want to say? Um, I feel like it's the perfect song to listen to on Valentine's it Day. Really Let's ring, ring in Valentine's Day with a little bit of Bloodstream. Hell yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. And uh, the last thing I have to say about it is that there's more to come. And there's like a whole series that's oh. going to come probably next month. Fuck. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy a snippet of Bloodstream, the music video, and stream the song. If you haven't yet, put it on your playlist. Room service. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? You practically begged me to help you prep for Q&A. Did I? You seem desperate for my assistance, so... Starting to think you're threatened by me. Not at all. Then what is it? Okay, this is actually not Valentine's Day related, but we should answer it because we didn't answer it on the podcast. But the first episode we did, it says, hey, Shannon and Zoe, I just rewatched your latest podcast to find out if you had already answered my question, but you did not. How did you guys meet and then become roommates? Love your podcast, Shannon. Oh, my God. Oh, and they love your song, Ruin My Life. Thank you. I'm wearing a Ruin My Life hoodie right now. Wow. Oh, my God. What are the Um, odds? What are the odds? So we met at a gay bar, of course, at Flaming Saddles, which is now closed that's so sad but um i knew who you were because i went to nyu with an ex of mine (laughs) (laughs) i went to nyu with one of your exes and who 
very randomly I was almost roommates with. That's kind That's of some crazy so lore, right? Crazy. I feel like no one knows. No that. one knows that. I was almost we were almost roommates freshman year. Um, and then, but yeah, I feel like we were acquaintances kind of throughout college, never really close, but I, we followed each other, obviously, and I knew who you were. And then you, yeah, you came up to me at the bar yeah. and you said, and I was like, hey, I feel like we know each other. And I was like, yeah, I feel like we do know each other. Yep. And then we became friends. But then after that, the funny thing is that we started running into each other everywhere. Yeah. I had also just moved to back to LA from New York. Um, oh, yeah. And I was living in WeHo and we ran into each other. I think the third time was that it was like hamburger Mary's. Oh my god! And I went back to your apartment. Yeah, with and you. then you were just like you were like I was like, what are you doing right now? We're all like hanging out, and you're like, ah, nothing. <laughs> I, I think I just gotten. You were going up through with. a brick break. You're going through a breakup, and you were like, I want new friends. <laughs> yep, there it is. So, and then we went to a cafe, and I did your tarot cards, and that yep. was the most LA thing that ever happened. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. You were deep in your witch era. Deep in my witch era. I was so lost. I was like, tell me anything. I just remember I had tell my you, future. Please. You pulled that card where it's got all the knives in the back, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, that it's feeling like me right now oh my god but yeah that's, that's how we met and then we became roommates because we both were moving at the same time yeah. and ended up texting each other and i was like i'm going home for a few months and you're like i'm staying, I was like, with, I'm my staying with my mom for a few months and i was like okay we want to move at the same time it's perfect it was so perfect yeah. and so we've lived in this apartment or house since march 2021 we'll be yeah we're on it's our three year three anniversary years. <laughs> my constant in my life are happy we keep saying domestic bliss yeah domestic partnership domestic, our domestic partnership it's yeah. very sweet well now that we both are like just like navigating being single i feel like we're we're i don't know it's like a new dynamic leaning on house. each other in a different way yeah yeah because for sure we're not like hanging out yeah with a partner. yeah and it's also just like i feel like our house used to be pretty full like it was like there'd be yes. like four of us here at one time and now yep and it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. And we're making each other tea every night. <laughs> making each other tea. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's very fun. The saddest thing is that so many questions are about lesbian bed death. <sighs> like so many. Like <sighs> so many. I think that happens to straight people too, though. Does it? In long-term relationships. I think sex is just like a hard... It just like changes a lot throughout a long-term relationship. I, and yeah. But yeah, I guess it is really associated with... I feel like lesbians just like spend too much time together and maybe that's why it happens more yeah because like with straight couples there's more like uh like boys nights and girls nights. you know what i mean there's yeah, more there's like separation. separation so there's time to miss each other and time mm -hmm. to like not be with each other all the time yep um so maybe that's why it's like you're always it's like really easy to just like be like let's just be together all the time yeah and you then know? you like, get your really your like romantic relationship starts to feel like more friendship yes yes because you're hanging to. out with all your friends yeah totally but also i feel like um it's because straight sex is like easier or like men have mm -hmm. a higher like mm -hmm. it's just like i don't know we need a sex therapist to come and talk about talk it talk about it yeah because totally it's obviously a phenomenon yeah. even the fact that i got that many questions about it it's like yeah it's affecting people I think that also straight sex like can obviously lesbian sex can last really short too but i think that there is kind of like a people we are, it can last forever also so <laughs> and if you know in the beginning obviously it does last forever because you're like you want to keep going and going and going but then you like associate sex with being like okay this is gonna be a marathon so i have to be ready if we like start right now i'm like you have those th like, yeah you said the fears in your head too of like that's that's good that's sex, sex. But it's like that doesn't have to be good sex. There can be all kinds of good sex. But yeah, that's so true. Yeah, like I, there's got lesbians be... can have quickies too. But I feel like it's just more rare. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great sound. Bite. That's why lesbians could have they can have quickies too. too. That is why I think sex before you are going out or before you're like you have to meet people or like go to dinner. That's the best because if you have a time constraint. Mm. Okay, time constraint so fun and also it's like it's not as like intimidating going into it right mm -hmm. and then also um then you have a secret when you go out and you meet your friends you're like oh my god we just fucked oh my god it's actually so true <laughs> and the right? best it's funny when you go out with someone and you can tell that you that can happened. tell you can so tell it's in the air yeah uh, sex in the air i'm gonna get a sex therapist in here at some point to talk about it just, I'm gonna get one I for myself. You're just gonna get one for yourself. Just yeah, for and I was me. like, go off. <laughs> no, I want someone to come talk about it because I'm very curious. It's yeah. clearly affecting people. <clears throat> and what is the answer to yeah. the problem? Also, I think women in general have not all, but a lot of women sex 
you have to feel really good Mm -hmm. in the relationship and and safe and secure to want to sleep with someone so then you have two women and there's maybe not like this like like a man like instigating the sex yeah as, as much yeah. and then it just like more time passes and there's nothing more awkward than like when a lot of time has passed since you slept with your partner and then you're like are we okay yes 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 and it, there's pressure and it's like this like it yeah. just builds i think also accepting that like in a long-term relationship sex is going to like fluctuate, fluctuate. and change and like it's not going to always be the same way and it's definitely not going to always be like it was just in the beginning you totally. know um and just like being like knowing that that doesn't mean your relationship's bad so true you know but yeah i don't think it's not necessarily a sign that you have to give up totally it definitely totally. is a sign that something you should need to work on True. something. yeah figure something out i feel like that's when you need to go do like meet me at a bar and mm-hmm, pretend like mm-hmm, you don't know mm-hmm. each other kind of that's vibe. so fun i love that so much <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you were just like reminiscing I oh saw god i love it <laughs> <laughs> i'm like where'd she just go hi shannon uh, first off, I can't believe you made a number for us to call. And second of all, I can't believe I'm calling it right now. How many is too many orgasms? Like, if your love goes once, do you just match? But what if you have like eight more in the tank? Like, what's too many? What's selfish? What's okay? Anyway, happy Valentine's Day to you, Shannon. And Zolita, love, love, love bloodstream take care bye what if i have eight more in the tank <laughs> eight more in the tank go off if your partner i mean i don't think there's not? too many there's never, i don't think there's too many either like i would never if think you don't get tired just keep going i don't know yeah i feel like read the read the room yeah, read the vibes yeah <laughs> is there such thing as too many i don't think so yeah that's my Maybe for spending your whole day doing like i don't know yeah i guess like or if you're like forcing someone to stay down stay down yeah maybe not that maybe (laughs) don't do that (laughs) but also i feel like you can tell if someone wants to be doing what they're doing read the room read the room read the room if you've got eight more in the tank let them out yeah (laughs) eight more in the tank (laughs) i wanted to ask your thoughts on what you think a mask person should wear for lingerie i always find there's a hard line and i don't really want to wear stereotypical clothing but i don't want to look like i don't put effort in you know well this is a great time to mention the sponsor of this podcast a huge thank you to tomboy x for sponsoring this video tomboy x creates sustainable size and gender inclusive underwear loungewear and swimwear for everyone they make everything from bikinis and briefs and boy shorts and underwear for tucking and compression tops and they make all of those in sizes 3xs to 6x If you are a mask person struggling to find lingerie, lingerie, I highly, highly, highly recommend Tomboy X. It's so cute, so hot. Tomboy X is also a queer run and queer founded company, which is amazing. And as queer people, if you're watching and you're queer or if you're an ally, we have to support our queer run businesses, our queer founded businesses. It's so, so, so important. Supporting them also supports my podcast. And if you want to get a pair of cute boy shorts and your mask lingerie, or if you're femme, they also have underwear for you. Go to www.tomboyx.com slash Shannon for 20% off everything in the store. Thank you, Tomboy X, for sponsoring this video and for making me feel hot. I love to feel hot. Thank you. What do you think as someone who Mm. is attracted to sometimes mask lesbians? Yeah. Or mask people. What do you think is hot? Because I totally relate to the question also of wanting to feel like you put effort in. Briefs. What are those called? Like the tight ones? Mm -hmm. Like like boxer briefs. Yeah. I think even like like femme presenting people wearing Tomboy X hot too. I know. I think there's just this thing where like for me, because I I identify kind of mask, like Mm -hmm, mm tomboy-ish. But where if i'm dating someone and they have like full ass lingerie on and i'm like that's so nice like yeah. you really yeah, that's you like eff- you put effort, put effort in, in you went out of your way to like look good yeah and then i'm like i want to look like i tried put, and so uh-huh. there's something about just like a sports bra that feels like wrong i didn't try but something i like doing is if you're like having like a night like that and you know that someone's wearing lingerie i would wear like tomboy x like underwear and then i would mm-hmm. wear I would wear like a ribbed tank and then come out in that, you know, yeah. tight and That's hot. white and you can see through it. That's hot. Someone just knocked on the door. Hold on. This one is kind of, this is going to make me giggle and I'm, but I'm, I swear I'm mature and I'm not making fun of anyone, but it's just, okay. 
Okay, so I'm a newly mostly out lesbian, and by new, I mean I first told someone I liked girls at 10 and have had 10 girls I've talked to never officially dated in my life. So I've been coming out for like 15 years anyways. I haven't had sex with a girl in over two years, and I think due to internalized homophobia or just fear of intimacy, I never let myself get to the point where I would get off in the past experiences with girls. Now that I feel comfortable with myself, my body, my sexuality, I'm excited to start having sex, but I'm scared because when I am at home, when I finish... I squirt and it's a lot. <laughs> and it's a lot. It's so sick that you just squirt every time you finish alone. It's, yeah. Oh my God. Go okay. you. Okay, so they said, I just wondered, is there any advice for that? Should I tell a partner before? I don't know. It's just a lot and I, I'm scared. It's personal and I'm scared. Oh Anyways, my gosh. Should you tell someone before if you know it's going to happen? happen? I feel like maybe surprise them. They'll probably love it. I don't know. You think? I don't it depends on how you feel about it yeah if you're like nervous th- I would be scared that I would say you know this happens when I finish and then what if you didn't and then you're like I feel like just, just, I would just let say, it just let it happen and they're gonna feel awesome about themselves too okay <laughs> love the advice <laughs> that's I don't know maybe that's the wrong advice no I feel like that's I feel like yeah i feel like i'd be like okay i crushed that i would feel pretty awesome if that happened yeah if i was on the other side of that (laughs) good for you honestly yeah i never i would never be embarrassed about that no don't go into sleeping with someone thinking that that's like a bad thing about yourself that's definitely not that's so hot yay we're so proud of you (laughs) get back out there have you or zoe ever been attracted to each other's partners or hookups I don't think we have, we don't really have the same type. No, that's yeah. what I was thinking. I'm like, I feel like we don't yeah. have much crossover no. in our... There's maybe been like a couple people in our whole friendship where we like both mutually ha- were attracted, attracted to them. Yeah. Not that but much. Not, like, maybe, yeah. No. Yeah. It's not a lot it's of crossover. The best. You know, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> we are fine over thank here. Thank God. Hi, Shannon. Um, so I just wanted to share a quick experience I had about... Um, I don't know how many years ago now, but this girl who was not out yet to her family, and honestly, I really wasn't either, Um, but we were both home from college at the time, and we were in her bed, um, in her childhood room, at her parents' place, right? We are making out, things were getting a little steamy, and all of a sudden we hear the garage door open, and she was like, oh my God, you have to go hide, go get in the closet. Like, girly, I've been working for years to try to get out of this closet, and now you're telling me I gotta sit down with your dirty laundry, your lip smackers from 2006. It's just, this isn't it. I don't think we hung out again though, but hope you're doing well, girly. Um, <laughs> peace and love. It's funny. Not the hope you're doing well. <laughs> I love girly. the lip smackers from 2006. We all have one, don't we? So valid. Uh, it's so funny. I had friends who used to have sex in the closet whoa really they were on the same volleyball team i think in college and like lived with a bunch of their college teammates yeah and so they would like hook up in their closet oh my god it's the darkest seven minutes in heaven literally it's like the gayest shit ever have you ever had to hide like no when you were hooking up somewhere no have you no but definitely like one time i made out with this girl in the very back of an expedition Uh and her dad was driving the car but you know how expeditions what? are really long? Yeah, yeah, Just like yeah. sneaky shit sneaky, like that. Yeah, sneaky makeout vibes. It definitely was doing a lot mm-hmm. of that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever We were just talking about this hide. though because I had experiences in high school and you kind of didn't really. No, with girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, not at all. And then you were in New York. And then I was in New York and it was like the mecca. to the wall. You Everybody do just doing there. anything they wanted. Yeah. 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 I went to I Oklahoma. Like it, yeah. I like repressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, went, I went from like hooking up with a girl to like miserable. Jesus terrible i made out with someone in your room once (gasps) during a big party and your mirror fell to the floor oh you didn't tell me that Mm -hmm. didn't break though (laughs) (laughs) thank god hey for the new ep with zoe what are playlists for breakups best friends etc drop the songs please if you don't know i have a playlist that's building from every episode each guest picks a breakup song and a sex song and then it's such a good idea growing so if you are interested in finding new music or like just like cool music the link is in the bio of both Spotify and uh, I guess all of them, actually. It's, the link is in the bio. You can click it. And I'm going to make Zoe pick two new songs. So Woo-hoo! she'll have four songs now on it. Okay. Also, another, my my recommendation also, yeah. Spotify Spotify makes, <gasps> yes. you can look up like breakup. 
playlist and it'll be like mm-hmm. sad breakup or like and it's for you angry breakup and i make it for you based off of stuff you already listen to so okay spotify is kind of the best yeah i matched with a girl online over a month ago and we quickly started talking on the phone a lot and had great conversations and after a week we decided to go on a date i put her address in my gps and she lived a street over from me we had our first date and it lasted a whole weekend <laughs> as queer dates do okay and we have been going strong for a month and seem super comfortable When is it too soon to make things official? We both also deleted our online dating profiles after our first date. Wow. After the first date, they said, we like each other. Yeah, dang. I feel feel like there's no time. I don't know. I don't think there's any time too soon to make things official. official. I think if you're really feeling it and if you, yeah, I don't think that there's any, yeah, like rule. No. Just like. Definitely no rule, but also just be mindful, I feel. Yeah. But also like. We put so much pressure on relationships too. Like mm-hmm. you can get in a relationship and you can also leave it. Like, yeah, yeah. Just because you make it official and it's your just girlfriends. A, yeah, word. It's a word. Yeah, it commitment, doesn't mean you can change you're that stuck. commitment. Mm-hmm. So if you're feeling that way, but also, I feel like you also would want it to feel special. So if you're gonna do it, just make sure it's like the right. Also, there's no rush. Right, you we're, say, we're giving all back and forth. I know. Like, I know. I'm like, get wait, in that relationship. Second. Don't get in. That I think there's no rule on timing, but I also think there's no rush. And if you could, you can also, you know, you can clarify, like, okay, we're not hooking up with other yeah. people, but you don't need to be like, we are committed partners now, totally, um, for life. <laughs> you know no, what I mean? For like, sure. You can, you can take it a little bit slower if you want. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's I do no think rule. I think like a normal per, like progression, the first step is just being like you're the only one I'm sleeping with. Or yes, you're the only yes. one I'm I'm seeing right now. Mm-hmm. And then it could go from there. Agreed. Yeah. But ah, good luck with queen. that sounds beautiful. I used to believe in love. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're so happy for you. We're so happy. <laughs> what advice would you give to anyone who faces rejection by their crush? Would your advice differ if the crush is gay or straight? First of all, no. I feel like crush mm-hmm. <laughs> crush rejection is universal for no, no matter who. I was thinking this is kind of interesting because you kind of had an experience where you had a big crush on someone. And was rejected. Uh-huh. But then, then it did come full around. circle. Yeah. I think that in general, though, if a crush rejects you, you just got to like respect that. Mm-hmm move on and i mean like you could have a lucky situation where they come back around (laughs) (laughs) where it could Could work work out out. for you but um i feel like generally listen to listen to what people say when they say it yeah and yeah it doesn't feel good to like pine after someone who doesn't want you no i do think the best answer is just to accept it accept it and then just move on but yeah it can sometimes it comes around sometimes it can turn around but don't wait like but don't wait don't wait around just move on don't waste your time i feel like there's so many people out there why would you waste your time with someone who's not gung-ho like a hundred percent i like you completely completely yeah yeah i feel like it's i just thought of that whole phrase of the like um i feel like a lot of the time people (laughs) (laughs) they're like being a part of a club that doesn't that will have you not wanting to be a part of okay i got it she's got it um yeah i feel like a lot of the time people like want people who don't want them back because it's the whole idea of like why would you want to be a part of a club that would have you wouldn't have you no that would have you or like it's if a club would have you and like (laughs) you know yes i I I just don't know the saying but i'm trying why it's like i don't want to be a part of a club that would accept me because you're like if they would like me then what's wrong with them so it just basically all comes back down to self-love. <laughs> My brain is missing. It all comes back down to self-love. And if you love yourself and then when somebody loves you. It's so much better that then, way. Then you believe them because you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. I am great. And of course they would like me, you know? Totally. That is what I'm working on. <laughs> self-love. I, for so long, I was like, oh, I don't like myself, mm-hmm. which I definitely have issues with myself. But I feel like I do kind of like myself a little bit. I more so don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I do kind a of like A little bit. Myself. A sprinkle. I just don't trust myself. Like mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. like trust. So you're working on self-trust. Self-trust. Yeah. I mean, it, it, self-love is wrapped up in that as well. Totally. But I'm not like, oh, I'm the worst person I've ever met. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Thank God. <laughs> think, I'm taking baby steps. Baby steps. I may have thought that like two weeks ago. <laughs> And I'm like, hey, I'm not Come half back around. Bad. Oh, 
Sometimes I'm okay. <laughs> We're working on it. We're really working on it. My wife and I have been married for six years, and a little over a year ago, we met this other married lesbian couple. We have discussed the idea of asking them about swinging. How do we ask them without making it feel weird or affecting our friendship? Whoa. Like we definitely, I don't know if either of us have good advice for this because neither of us are not in this qualified. situation. I mean, I think that in general with any of the situations, like open Commun- communication and asking and then just no, being like no stress at all. <laughs> yeah, if you just, are just like absolutely not. Yeah. I will not. We will not be offended. Just test the waters. You could also like have a have a nice cook them dinner <laughs> have them over cook them dinner cook them some dinner put on a little music I, suss out the energy yeah maybe ask like have you guys play a game play triple x by we're not really strangers there you go there are some sexy questions in there and just like suss out the vibe and see if that's something that they've ever been that's what i'm curious about just see if they're curious about that too mm-hmm. that's what i'm and thinking. then you can see if they're curious about you yeah start with the sussing of the vibe yeah. i feel like it's so easy to ask like it's not crazy in this day and age to ask a question like Oh, like, yeah. have you guys ever thought about being open or like, have you ever done totally. like, just have, have a fun and then you just figure it out and then don't say anything if it's like, absolutely not bring a pineapple over to their house. Isn't that the thing for swingers? No way. Yes. If you put pineapples outside of your house, it means you're a swinger household. Oh my God. That's yeah. funny. Bring a pineapple we to the next dinner party. We start our lawn in pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even in relationships. We're swinging. Yeah. We're, we're swinging roommates. But I feel like there's a there's a good way to do it, and yeah. you, I think you could like also not ruin the friendship before. I don't totally. know. I don't know what'll happen once you start swinging. Yeah, that's a whole other. That's up for. It's up for debate. Hi, Shannon and Zalita. I was hoping to get some advice from both of you on my current situation. I'm a 21 year old woman loving woman virgin and not for a lack of trying but rather some serious trust issues i've known for a long time that i have no interest in hookups however i still very much want to have sex i'd love to hear both of y'all's individual perspectives on the role trust plays in your sex life is friends with benefits something that ever worked for any of you thanks for taking the time to listen i can't thank you enough for the representation each of you provide for the queer community much love to the both of you that's so nice so sweet trust for me is huge yeah thing. like that's this is like a for me mm-hmm. i'm very like need to <clears throat> feel so safe pretty much like need to know someone like pretty well but like not super well but i need to know that like they're a vetted person mm-hmm. that other people know that i'm not like in a in a sketchy for sex i could like yeah. i can make out with whoever it's not that deep to me but sex yeah. to me is like more intense what about you Sex is not as intense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've used to say that say this. Uh, I was like, I've, I guess I'm so curious. I'm such a curious person, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I think this way now, but I used to like when I was especially in my like crazy like exploratory era, post um, my your first like big break, the big breakup with the one who cheated one million mm-hmm. times. Um, <laughs> one million. When I was in my exploratory era, I was like just so curious about people. I was like, I wonder what they would be like in bed. And I yeah. literally would think that the first I would that would be like one of the first thoughts in my mind. I don't know if anybody can relate to that, but <laughs> the first thing I would think of if I met somebody that I found a little bit attractive was like, I wonder what they'd be like having sex. That's so, and I don't even picture people. <laughs> I can't picture people having sex. I guess like I can't picture it either, but that's why but I, then wonder, you're, I wanna know. Like, I wanna know. So I'm I'm a, I'm an explorer. You're like, you know how I could find out <laughs> what, what they're like having sex? I'll I'm have an sex with them. Exploring an adventure. But um yeah. I but I yeah, and I think I think friends with benefits can work if both people if there's I think just open communication yeah. always about anything. And I always. think it can work to a point. To a point. Yeah. To a point. I think, well, like, we have a friend who's been in a friends with benefits situation oh God, for so years. Yeah. Years. And I guess it can work for a long time. Yeah. If you just purely both know that, like... It's not going anywhere yeah. but that. I think I would struggle with that. Yeah, that wouldn't... I think that would work for a certain type of people and then probably for most people. I think for... And also... Wouldn't. wouldn't but. I think I would struggle with it, too, if it became consistent. That's the thing. Like, if, mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think I would catch feelings rather than like one person you know that you sometimes you like you have a vibe with and that you like randomly can go home with sometimes yeah but you're not like trying to meet up yeah but i don't know if i could do it yeah i feel like you <clears throat> sex is like sex is not so precious to me mm-hmm. but like 
you're not going to have a good time if you don't feel yes, safe or exactly. comfortable. I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, it's so funny being roommates with each other because we are so different. So different. We are so different. Back to the part about you being 20 and a virgin and not for a lack of trying, whatever. It will happen when it's meant to happen. Definitely. And I hope you wait for someone that it just feels right. Not like, oh. Especially if that's what you want. To yeah. Do. It doesn't yeah. have to be the love of your life. I'm not saying like wait for. Wait for someone that you feel really safe and that you trust. Mm-hmm. Because that person exists. Yes. Hi, guys. I'm from Texas. Yeehaw, me too. And I've noticed that there are so many masked lesbians that don't want to take the strap, (laughs) like won't even talk about it. They act like it's too feminine or embarrassing or something. It seems super rooted in gender roles. And I'm wondering if it's just me because I'm in Texas or if y'all have noticed that stereotype too. I think that's a stereotype. Definitely across the board anywhere, not just in Texas. Mm -hmm. You'll definitely find I definitely know masked people who are down to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Explore in that yeah. way. I think if that's something you want, like you're wanting a mask person who would want to do that, you can you can find them. Mm-hmm. It's like that's something you should talk about and then find someone who's interested yeah, in doing it. Yeah, and see what yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It definitely I feel like there is like a gender role thing going on there, but also just cuz it's like a, in our Mhm. Cuz we live in such a heteronormative mm-hmm, world. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't have to be. I don't think like Penetration is not inherently uh, submissive. Like getting penetrated is yeah. not inherently submissive. It can be very like, you know? Yeah, I agree. I hate that. I don't think it's, yeah. No, I agree completely. You said that the other day and I was like, that is so true. Right? Yes. Um, you can receive in a way that is dominant. Yeah. And it's not, it's also not inherently like feminine. No, definitely not. Obviously. Definitely not. Anyway, you can find someone. It is a stereotype, but masks are definitely... <laughs> definitely fine with she grace yeah quinn said yes okay this is a confession kind of are you ready i'm ready i'm a 32 year old cis lady engaged to a cis het man we've been dating for eight years and during the first half of our relationship the light bulb to my queerness went on it was kind of an aha moment where i realized i have been masturbating to women loving women porn or even love stories and i started to rethink some of my previous relationships with women in my past My partner is super supportive and amazing. I can be open about my sexuality with him, but I can't help but fantasize about women. While I don't feel I need to validate my queerness, I guess my question is, how common is this in the queer community? Am I even queer if I've never been with a woman? First of all, yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yes. You don't have to sleep with someone. If you think you're queer and you are having those desires, yes. That is like a tough situation. I don't know what I would do if I were deep into like a monogamous relationship and then and then suddenly have that yeah i feel like i definitely know people that that's happened me too too and yeah that's that i'm sure that's tough i guess just talk about it yeah and hope that again there's a world for exploration (laughs) i mean yeah everything honestly every single question we ever gonna gonna answer it's yeah yeah it's gonna gonna be like yeah because you don't want to hold a part of yourself um Back, even if it's just like communicating that to yeah. your partner like you don't want to hide a part of yourself that you're discovering and totally i think i would struggle with like thinking like did i i would want to explore every part of myself mm-hmm. and it would be hard for me to like, know that there was a part of yourself that existed that i never saw. that you never got to see through mm-hmm. that's hard but you don't you don't want to lose your long-term partner. partner if you're in such a good relationship i but feel for you we feel for you but maybe have the understanding yeah Maybe there's like an opportunity for like a threesome or something. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. We're rooting for you. But thank you for trusting us with this. Thank you for your confession. Hi, Shannon. My name is Catherine. Thank you so much for having this phone line available. I'm in my early 30s and recently discovered that I'm queer. While I have a lot of fears about coming out, my main one is that female friends, both past and present, will look back at our friendship and wonder and, and, ever, and wonder if she was ever into me. Uh, like that time she was dancing close to me. Did she feel something for me? Any help would be so appreciated. Thank you, Shana. Appreciate you. That is the most classic like fear. Uh, We've all that. felt it. Every queer woman's felt it. Literally. Um, it's like classic like locker room fear too. Totally. Of, did they think I was looking like... Oh my God. I was always so afraid. I would only... In high school when I did photography, I only took pictures of women and they were all very like sensual photos. And I was always terrified when I of coming out and being like oh my god they're gonna think i was such a creep like they're gonna think i was like yep. terry richardson vibes <laughs> oh my god i was scared 
too in sports and stuff yeah and then in my sorority everyone always thought i was super prude because i would always turn around when everyone mm-hmm. was changing and mm-hmm. then i just leaned into that as my thing and i would just be like yeah i'm prude yeah, i'm prude i like don't want anyone to see me naked i don't want to see people naked i'm yeah. like that's just the me thing which i don't care about that yeah as much yeah, as yeah. i let i mean it did actually then become kind of real a thing i did start getting kind of <laughs> weird about people being naked around me yeah but i've gotten now i'm like okay people know who you're gay and it's fine yeah but i think that's just like a common phenomenon and something you just have to let go of because it's absolutely you can't go back in time and change anything you did and you know the truth i'm sure you probably did have some there probably were some (laughs) times that you did have a crush i look back on some of the things i did and i'm like i was cuddling with you because i liked you yeah yeah but a good friend a good lifelong friend's not gonna give a shit yeah exactly you know the people who really love and care about you are not gonna think back and be like maybe they'll be so happy to play a part in your journey yeah you know that would be a good friend also just know that that's literally something that it's so universal. oh my god it's that is a universal experience yeah you're not alone hey shannon a newly out lesbian calling from good old New York City. For anyone else out there who's sleeping with women for the first time, because I know a couple weeks ago someone asked about, like, what do you do the first time you sleep with a woman? And this is just a fun little story of my experience. First time sleeping with a woman, she knew it was my first time. And it was, like, the second time we were hooking up with each other. I was, like, as I get a kid in the candy store, I didn't know what I wanted to do, what I wanted to touch. I just wanted to touch everything. And she was, like super super hot but anywho she was over my place she like brought her vibrator with her and she (laughs) get on top i'm trying to be all sexy she has like the vibrator between us i get on top and like vibrator just dies and there's this this dead toy between us and she's at my place so there's no way to charge it and long story short end up just fucking laughing it off awkward moment turned hilarious and this is just fun advice for anyone out there who's nervous about it sleeping with another woman for the first time like not fake it till you make it obviously find someone you're comfortable with just have fun with it it's not it's serious but it's not that serious there's nothing like a vibrator, vibrator dying oh my god it's like such a mood and it killer. being in between you oh my god who's charging these vibrators <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not me the funniest thing is that if it happens with somebody like if it happens with like a new person and the vibrator dies they're like oh, are you using that <laughs> <laughs> you out here using it all the time <laughs> no the worst is when it happens and you're alone and then i'm just like okay this do- i'm done now i guess i'm not I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna finish with my i'm gonna go manual i literally will just be like bummer and sometimes it's even better going manual after true or sometimes i don't know okay we, we, I don't know. We went totally <laughs> off. <laughs> the thing I really liked about what she said is about the kid in a fucking candy store yeah, thing. Yeah. Because that is like time. such a classic. I do feel like when if you sleep with someone for the first time, they're like, and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, like so ah, exciting. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's also such a validating thing if you're unsure of your sexuality and then you start to sleep with a woman if you're feeling that feeling of like a kid in the candy store and you just like oh my god yeah you're definitely not straight yeah just in case you were (laughs) in case you were scared Uh uh-huh or curious you're definitely not straight if you're feeling that feeling sex should be fun though sex should be fun and funny especially like i feel like a lot of girls build up for themselves hooking up with a girl for the first time Mm -hmm. but i'm like you have to remember that you're hooking up with a girl and like women are so kind to each other and like yes if you're if you find the right person to be hooking up with for the first time they will make it an enjoyable situation for you absolutely it will be fun also the nice thing this is something that i feel like is so that i talk to my sister about a lot um because she is straight Mm -hmm. and (laughs) she is straight But I feel like a lot of straight women that are having sex with men are like very, it's like, oh my God, I'm so concerned about like the size of my areola or like the way that, or like my, like, yeah, or just like any parts, parts of their body that, mm-hmm. and that I feel like with queer women, it's so much less totally or there's less fear around that because we're all we are all so different. Well, all I, of our bodies are so different. And so I think that's just like, there's not as much of a, I don't know. It's a safer si- situation. It feels but so the much thing safer. Is, the fear is still there. That's the thing. I feel like if you're a woman who's only exclusively slept with men, yeah, the first time you're hooking up with a girl, you still are. In oh, that those mindset. fears are still going to be there. But once you like sleep with a woman for a, a while, yeah. then you're just like, oh my god, yeah, no one yeah. cares about 
the size of my nipple. (laughs) (laughs) No, so true. Okay, my question is, how do you slide into someone's DMs? I feel like I'm not a very flirty person. Okay, well, I think you start with story likes, potentially, because that's apparently... a few story likes. That is like the flirtiest (laughs) shit, apparently, ever. Yeah. Or my thing is always just to reply to a story like yeah reply to a story funny. that is repliable mm-hmm. yeah. or like relatable it doesn't yeah. even, it doesn't have to be funny if you're not like if that's not your vibe but just wait for something that's a very good conversation starter mm-hmm. reply see if it goes off i think that that's the best that's way to the do best it. way what if someone doesn't post stories ever though then you're shit out of luck. <laughs> and it's probably not someone... If someone's not using Instagram and posting yeah. stories, I don't think don't sliding slide into in. their DMs is the That's right true. way to get it to them. You could send them one of their posts and be like, true. this is really cute. <gasps> That's good. I don't know. Or be funny about it too. Yeah. Or like... Or say something. That can be the conversation it. starter. I love that. That's really smart, Zoe. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> this be- coming from the girl who's like, Shannon, what should I text back? <laughs> Like, I am. Like, I have such texting that anxiety. You really do. I really do. Yeah. The text could be, "What are you doing tonight?" And you're like, "Does this make sense?" I remember. I'm do you like, remember? Yes. Like, oh my god, I remember. Like, in your first I single era, like, I think I literally in my notes it was like, "Hey, smiley face." Hey, explanation. Hey, two wise. And I was like, which one? Like, yeah, <laughs> literally, literally. There's nuances here. <laughs> I mean, it is true. Yeah. When you're first starting talking to someone, you're like, "Oh, is this cringy or is this totally?" That- totally. I'm getting to the point too. You're also just like trying to suss out, or like, how do they tell? What's yes, their texting exactly. Style? Also, okay, the texting style. I was just gonna say, like, sometimes I get in my head on like, ha 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 ha, yeah, and laugh my fucking ass off. And yeah, 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 like, yeah. What are what kind of what kind of laugher are you? Totally, totally. <laughs> I can overthink anything too, but <laughs> you definitely overthink it. Harder. I'm an overthinker. Period. Me too, but. I'm, not about that i'm just like not about that let's go i'm like i'm gonna send one extra y and they're gonna fucking hate me <laughs> <laughs> last thing i have a couple of fuck mary kills for us are you ready yes cow's milk almond milk and oat milk oh my god i'm gonna say marry oat milk you know it kill almond milk fuck cow's milk me too that's kind of hot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not that's kind of hot, right? Or, or Mary Cow's Milk. Damn. I don't know. Maybe Mary Cow's Milk because you need it for cheese and ice cream and everything. Holy shit. I think Maybe I'm actually... fuck oat milk. I think you're right. I mean, I'm definitely... Oat milk's ke- going to go out of style at some point. It is. Almond milk has, is Almond out. Almond milk can it's go disgusting. away. It's just too too thin. It's so thin. Like, what... Yeah, what you funny, look at an almond and think that would make? Um, let me good milk, milk it. Let me milk that almond. No, although I like macadamia milk. Not me. Okay. <laughs> Not I. <laughs> Not me. Aubrey Plaza, Natasha Leone, and Kate Blanchett. Oh, that's okay. a tough roster. Mary, Kate, fuck Audrey, kill Natasha. Yeah, I'm Mary, Audrey, fuck Kate. Yeah, kill Natasha. Yeah, yeah. I see that for you. I see that for you. <laughs> I'm gonna do you uh-huh. in your pink hair, blonde hair, dark hair era. Okay. <laughs> I feel okay. I feel awkward saying any of this, but it's fine. I think I would kill pink hair. Uh huh. Just because I'm not a big like colored uh-huh. hair person. Mary blonde, fuck brunette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. That checks out for That's- you. That really checks out for you. Okay. Now you uh-huh. do me uh-huh. in my three relationships. So my first, second, and third. Okay. Let's call them that. Like my first relationship, I'm in my early 20s. You're in your second, thrasher, early- yeah. skate kind no, of No, my vibe. first relationship, I'm in my like Dallas, still kind of girl next door vibe. Okay, Dallas girl next door. And then, and then second, second was second, thrasher. thrasher and like wearing wallet chains and shit. Yeah. Third is this. Okay. Kill the first one, fuck the second one, marry you now. Yeah. It's like the right? acceptable answer. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's the only acceptable like, answer. We had to get rid of the baby me for I'm sure. Good. Boy genius. Oh my God. <sighs> marry Julian, uh-huh. fuck Phoebe. Actually, I would marry Phoebe. Knew- you would marry Phoebe? And then I'd probably sleep with Lucy. Yeah. I guess. Oh my God. I don't want to kill any of I them. I don't want to kill any of them. I don't want to kill any This will game say, is not real. This is I'm, not real. I am like attracted to all three of them in, in different, in really different ways. But I mean, I'm like, I think about Phoebe a lot. I love her. 
I think about Phoebe Phoebe a lot. Um, I want to be best friends with Julianne. Yeah, me too. I want to be friends with all of them. I would say fuck Phoebe, Mary, Lucy, bestie Julianne. That that works. For me personally. Okay, the plastics in their original Mean Girls. Regina, Karen, Gretchen. Fuck Karen, Mary, Regina, kill Gretchen. Same. Except for like Karen and Regina could go either way. Mm Mm-hmm. No, I, I would to, want to be married. I would want to be married to Regina. But I was kind of obsessed with Amanda Seyfried. I mean, she's amazing. Especially, yeah. I my crush started for her with Jennifer's well, body. But we're talking about their characters, and, um, not about the actresses. But she's kind of sweet. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. And Regina's kind of evil. I know, but I kind but of. But Regina's like, also kind of a life, lesbian. She'd keep life exciting. Okay, I'm with you. I changed my answer to yours. Do you know? Do you watch Friends enough to do? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, we are wishing you a happy Valentine's Day wherever you are, whoever you're with. If you're alone, don't feel alone. You're with us. You're with us. (laughs) In our hearts. In our (laughs) hearts. You're with us. You're with Quinn. Quinn, you slept through the whole podcast, girl. Girl. Girl, You slept through the whole podcast. Say happy Happy Valentine's Day. Beautiful Valentine's Day. Love yourself. I love, love all of your friends. You know what? If you have the opportunity to spend Valentine's Day with a friend, I feel like you should romance your friends the same way yeah. that you romance your partners. I've been going on friend dates. Christy took me on an, an, a glorious date. She sent me a uber black. Oh my gosh. What a nice girl. Now that's how you romance a friend. Yeah, you can do that too. <laughs> so be safe out there. Say bye, Quinn. <laughs> okay. That, that is literally this with Quinn in the middle. That was domestic. <laughs> that is our domestic partnership. Hey.